Well, good morning, everyone. I'm going to get right into it um, with our signees and uh, mention all of them, and then we'll take some questions. But uh, I'm really happy with uh, uh, our staff, our, our recruiting staff, um, led by Taylor uh, Bratt, uh, recruiting and operations with, with Maddie Gage. We, we have such great support, great help here, um, communicating with parents and, and communicating with players and, and prospects. And then uh, our support staff, our strength coaches, uh, our nutritionist, um, Joe Hall in player development, uh, um, athletic training, academics. So many people have uh, uh, a big hand in, in all these kids uh, selecting uh, Kansas State, and we always talk to the guys about it's not one person. Uh, it, it's it's a collective group of people that are going to impact you uh, on your journey uh, at Kansas State. So I'll just kind of go through um, the list of, of guys we have signed, and, and we have signed four guys from uh, the state of Ka uh, Kansas, Callen Barta from uh, Topeka, uh, Seaman High School. He's going to play defensive back for us. Really excited about him. Gus Hawkins uh, from Mill Valley High School. Um, Another state championship uh, that, that Gus had, uh, going to be offensive lineman for us. Really excited about uh, Gus. Uh, Caden Massey from Linden High School in Linden, Kansas, another state champion. Um, Caden's going to be a, an offensive lineman for us that we're really excited about. Um, and then J.B. Price uh, from Overland Park. He's at Blue Valley High School. We've got a number of Blue Valley kids on our, on our football team, and, and JB is going to be um, a really good running back for us here, and we're excited about uh, JB's uh, future. Uh, state of Texas, signed three guys from the state of Texas. Trey Davis, uh, a wide receiver, really athletic wide receiver from Troop High School in uh, Troop, Texas. Um, Boone Morris, uh, big linebacker from uh, Talco, Texas, Mount Vernon High School, excited about uh, Boone. Um, Jacquees Spradley Demps, a wide receiver from Weiss High School uh, in Texas. And uh, uh, Jacquees is going to play wide receiver for us. Um, really explosive kid that we're extremely excited about. And then some of the uh, – let's go to, then go to Colorado. We have two guys out of Colorado. Uh, Blake Barnett, quarterback from Erie High School. Uh, Blake also won a state championship. And uh, – uh, Jake Stonebreaker, a linebacker uh, out of Castle Rock in Colorado, uh, Douglas County. Uh, really excited about him. He's going to be a linebacker for us. Um, and then a handful of the other guys from, from outside of uh, states where we have one coming from. Ryan Howard. Everybody knows the Howard family from Downington, Pennsylvania, Downington West High School. Uh, excited about him. Uh, Ryan's going to be an offensive lineman for us. Um, Kyle Rockers from Norwalk, Iowa, Dowling Catholic High School. Um, Kyle's going to be another offensive lineman for us. We really did well with our offensive line uh, class coming in here with Coach Riley. Uh, Devon Rice, uh, running back uh, from Las Vegas. Uh, Bishop Gorman, uh, great tradition out at Bishop Gorman. Uh, Devon also was a state champion and uh, excited about uh, Devon. He's going to come in and play running back for us. And then Zayshon Rich uh, from Crystal, Minnesota, uh, a corner. Uh, from Minneapolis North. We've got a lot of familiarity with uh, that high school as we recruited a lot of guys in the past from there. Um, and excited about uh, Zayshon. He's going to be a corner for us. So uh, really good group of, of high school guys uh, that we have coming in. And then we signed two junior college kids as well. Uh, Malcolm Alcorn Crowder uh, from Butler Community College, a defensive lineman from Brockton, Massachusetts. Um, Malcolm's going to be a big defensive, line, defensive lineman that's got a lot of versatility um, that um, – going to play a number of spots we're excited about. And then Dante Thomas, uh, a defensive back from uh, Louisiana and Southwest Mississippi Junior College, and, and both those two kids will, will be enrolled at, at mid-year. The other neat thing is we have – I think we have nine guys enrolling um, at, at mid-year with uh, seven high school guys and two JC guys. And so um, let's kind of open it up for questions and talk about some of these guys. Uh, what were the factors – 15 guys, 13 high school, what were the factors behind the smaller class? Well – a, we didn't have as many seniors that were leaving us uh, as we did in the previous year. Um, and so uh, we were just trying to find the right fits. It didn't have anything to do with the transfer portal or anything like that. We just were trying to find the right fits as well as we just weren't going to have as big of a senior class um, when a lot of these guys are actively being recruited in May, June, and July during that camp season. Uh, any reason for – the greater number of offensive players and defense in this class? No. Um, once again, we didn't plan on losing as many defensive kids or, or from a senior class, so to speak. Um, 
and offensive line was the huge group. You know, we're losing all those offensive linemen. That was why it was so important for us to continue to develop. Offensive line is is a position that you need to have guys in the program. Um, you know, you'll occasionally get the uh, the transfer uh, to come in and help you. But we're trying to continue to develop that. And Coach Riley, I think, is the best offensive line coach in the country. And he's continued to develop guys um, that we have the next group waiting in the wings. So um, not anything other than um, some of the key need areas we had. And is Blake Barnett walking into a really unique situation? He's showing up soon and yeah and uh all of a sudden he's third on the depth chart not, not able to play yet but it's pretty yeah unique. no um something that we had talked about with him uh even during the recruiting process that um, um w there might be some change in that room and that change is going to open up an opportunity and then when the change did happen with a couple guys leaving i think it excited him even more um to say boy i get to come here and he knew he was coming in, in mid-year anyway uh, but the fact that he's going to get a ton of reps this spring um, to learn and to learn how to play college football. He was a state champion. He's a winner. He, he, he knows how uh, to win and lead his team. And so I'm excited for Blake to have the opportunity to come in uh, and get those reps. Is that kind of a challenge uh, to bring in a quarterback when you've got a, a freshman that's, that's starting right now? It's always a challenge in any position. And Arnie, everybody thinks it's just the quarterback spot. You know, we had a running back that was pretty good here for a few years <laughs> in Deuce Vaughn and bringing guys in. But you have to keep bringing people in, uh, A, for competition, and B, to continue to have your depth built up there. And, uh, you know, you take the quarterback position, it's uh, very rarely that um, – you get through a whole season with one, you know, you knock on wood that you can, but uh, it doesn't always happen. And so, um, you know, we're excited about uh, Blake. And Blake was somebody that we had targeted uh, for an awfully long, awful long time. And uh, we're excited for him to, to sign and come in here early. Where are you on scholarship numbers? Are you? Uh, we still have a few be? left. You know, I, I couldn't tell you an exact number. Um, we're looking for specific positions now. Um, a couple on the offensive side, a couple on the defensive side. So um, we don't have as many left as maybe some people might think with people that have left because we've we've put on some walk-on kids that have earned a scholarship um, uh, as well as um, we've just got a couple positions uh, earmarked still. And do you have a pretty good idea of uh, which guys are, are coming back of the of the seniors now? Yes. We, we do of, of our current team. Yeah, we, we've had good conversations um, with all those guys, and, and we um, feel pretty confident the ones that are coming back. When did Devon Rice pop onto your radar, and what do you like about him as a player? Well, he's from a pretty good high school, Bishop Gorman. They, they traditionally send out uh, lots and lots of players to, to Power Five, and, and uh, seeing his film, he's uh, an electric player, and he got on our radar. I think early fall, but then came out here unofficially uh, on his own later in the fall for a game and was so impressed with, with Devon, so impressed with his parents. Um, culture was really important to him. Fit was really important to him. We hit it off with, with he and the family. Um, B.A. hit it off with him. I think he really enjoyed being around our players, and this was just on a quick unofficial. And then we brought him out officially and um, – Coach True was the first one that called me after the kid was on campus and said, that's our kind of, that's our kind of player. That's our kind of guy he, with his work ethic, with character and integrity. Um, plus, he's a really talented player that can do everything. I mean, he, he can catch it out of the backfield. He can run in between tackles. He can take jet sweeps, all those things. And, and although he's a young, young player, he'll be here in January as well, and so we'll get a great chance to see him in the spring. And you seem to have a lot of those mid-year guys. Uh, is there – an orientation program you guys have tailored to ease them into the program? Yeah, uh, it's actually sometimes I think easier to come in in January any more than it is to come in in June. And the reason is you're not thrust into things right away in January. You know, you got your classes and you're working out with True. Um, and for the most part, a lot of us coaches, sports staff, everybody's around. And you're around all the players. You're around a full campus. Um, and we do a really good job. Uh, our sports staff does with with you know segmenting time out to get together with those guys and just talk to them about college and getting away from home. Um, and so sometimes I think it's easier as opposed to June when 
I'm, there's not a full campus here of students. A lot of our coaches are on the road with camps and recruiting and all this other stuff as well as it's summer and we're trying to give some people a little bit of a break in vacation time that you don't have somebody you know, 24-7 that you can come and see all the time. And so I, I think sometimes the mid-year guys get a little bit easier indoctrination. And I know you're way out in front of things here, but how can you envision your use of Boone Morris and Jake Stonebreaker? Um, yeah, um, you know, I th we think Jake is, is more like Dez as an outside guy, and we think Boone's uh, more of an inside guy. Um, and um, excited Boone will be here at semester. Uh, Jake will be here in the summer. But, uh, you know, I, 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 we, in talking to those two guys, they get to learn from two of the best in this league, in Dez Purnell and Austin Moore. And w what a benefit for those two guys to come in and learn from those guys. Ryan, did you have to do any reselling on him after Will decided to transfer? You know, Ryan's on his own journey, and that's what I've appreciated about Ryan through this entire process, even coming here in, in, the, in the summer when he came on his official visit of, of, Ryan, this is your journey. This is your story, and you've got to write your own story, and we're not recruiting you because of your brother. We're recruiting you because of Ryan. And I think that was the most important thing from, from the start to sell on him, and – he, he has loved K-State since the first time he came here and, and um, had, a, had a lunch with President Myers when he was in about eighth grade, um, that it was the right fit for him. And it's so cool to watch these offensive linemen that we have signed. Man, they're best of friends already, and they've really helped each other um, stay committed and stay together. Uh, and he's got a tremendous relationship with Coach Riley. Another question on offensive line, lineman, Caden Massey coming in from a really small school. What's that jump going to be like um, for him going from that to the big Oh, team? it's always a transition, um, you know, coming from small school, uh, playing eight-man football uh, and coming here. Uh, but, you know, Caden's a really athletic guy. You know, watch him play basketball, um, run track. He, he's um, a really smart kid. It, it, there's a transition for sure, but uh, – um, uh, we're excited because he doesn't have to come in and say, man, I'm going to be a starter on day one. He's going to learn and develop. And we had a kid that uh, we had up north, a kid by the name of Cordell Volson. And Cordell is a starting guard now for the Cincinnati Bengals and started as a, as a rookie. He's very similar to what I saw Cordell in high school. Cordell was at a, a school of about, I don't know, maybe 20 kids uh, in a class or something. And um, I see a lot of similarities, and that's what I know Ryle saw as well. And so we're excited about uh, Caden as we start his journey. I also want to ask about Jones, uh, Jake Stonebreaker. Is that one of the best Absolutely. defensive names you've ever Absolutely. come Absolutely. He has to play linebacker, doesn't he? Um, but he'll strike you. And he was, he was one of the best tailbacks and running backs in, in the state of Colorado. I mean, he rushed for a boatload of yards and was a physical runner. And – what I'm so impressed with me about Jake is he, he loves contact. He, he's a physical kid, and he'll strike in, and uh, uh, we're excited about getting him here. To uh, kind of be able to have the foundation of the class being Kansas kids, again, obviously it's the foundation of the program, but how, how, how cool is that to be able to do again? Yeah, it, it's really important that, that we do that. And like I said, we, we're signing for Kansas kids and done a tremendous job. Uh, as well of getting a bunch of Kansas kids committed from a walk-on standpoint, uh, that um, those guys will be just as important to the class as everybody else. Um, but that's still the core of what we're going to try to recruit is go inside out and not outside in. And that's why we've had the success is, is, is the Hayden Gillums that come in here and walk on and, and earn a scholarship and uh, all the other kids like that that uh, – you know, Austin Moore uh, that grew up wanting to be Wildcats, giving them the opportunity, and then those guys taking advantage of it. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that after Colin left, you guys didn't have a decommitment. What does that say about kind of what you're selling these kids on, that they're not attached to just one coach? Well, it kind of goes back to my opening statement of the, the impact that all of us have on, on everybody. On, on a, a person or a prospect, not one person. I hope nobody ever chooses a school for Chris Kleiman or for Taylor Bratt or for Van Malone um, because when they come in here and come on a visit, 
the first thing we talk about is the amount of people that are going to impact you. And it starts out on first floor um, with, with the strength and conditioning staff and comes all the way up to the fourth floor with coaches and everybody in between. And not every day is going to be a good day. There's going to be some hard days. And you can't have one person to lean on. You need to have a village to lean on. And that's something that I think we've done a great job of, of showing, selling, and then following through uh, of the village of people that are going to help you. You mentioned the versatility of a guy like Malcolm. What, 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 what excites you about what he's able to bring? Well, he did it at Butler, and we've had really good success uh, with guys from Butler. Um, the fact that um, you know we're going to make some adjustments with our defensive front uh, moving forward, probably not going to happen in the bowl game because we because of the, our limited numbers uh, of trying to find some size with some guys to, that can play inside or outside, trying to find some speed guys like we have with with, uh, with Mott, um, those type of guys. We're going to try to make some adjustments, but I like the fact that uh, Malcolm can play. He could play a nose. He could play an end. Um, that's the versatility we're excited about. You talked about offensive line being a constant need, but was there another position where you – Felt like you really needed to to bolster. Um, well, we a couple of those wide receivers. We always are trying to create competition and always trying to uh, fill needs at wide receiver. And um, you know, I, I'm excited because I really f feel like the the two wide receivers we have. Coach Middleton has really done a phenomenal phenomenal job uh, recruiting Trey and recruiting Jaquees of trying to find the right mix of a guy that could be an outside guy as well as a slot guy. And that's the thing that um, we may earmark one of those guys for, hey, you're a slot or you're an X or you're a Z, but the versatility of those guys with the ball in their hands as well as return returning the ball, whether it's punts and, and kicks, um, that was another area that we wanted to. Last year, we went bigger on the outside at wide receiver, and this year um, uh, we tried to find the most versatile guys who can play multiple spots. Who are the guys that are in scholarships, that have been put on scholarship? <coughs> Um, I'm going to share that another time, okay? 6'8", um, 6'7", six, six, seven, six, seven, the size of these linemen. Is this a unique class just based on their size? Well, we were trying to get some height and some length. I mean, that was one of the things that uh, was really important to us because, you know, we have so many guys that are, are can be a Cooper Beebe, can play him at tackle, can play him at guard, guard, KT, can play him at tackle, but can play him at guard, trying to get – some sustained length out there, like Pastore, you know, that John's six foot seven. And so for us, um, trying to find uh, that length, that height, yeah, one of those guys probably can move inside. Um, you know, Ryan is a versatile guy that can probably play inside or outside. I, I know that we're excited about Kyle Rockers because he could probably play inside or outside. And then, you know, just getting that, that great length. I mean, it's so hard to pass rush. And Coach Wild will tell you, it's hard to pass rush with Khalid Duke when you got a kid six foot seven. That's, that's going to be 315 pounds. And is there specific needs in the portal that you're still looking at? Yeah. Um, uh, position wise, I'm not going to go into that. We're just a couple offensive guys and a couple defensive guys still. you just break down Blake's uh, style as a quarterback a little bit and what you like out of him as an athlete? Well, when he sent me, and I asked him this early in the season, I, I watched, talked to him about um, um, he runs the ball because um, he's 215, 220 pounds. I think he won state in the 100 meter. Um, so he's really fast, throws the ball really well. But he sent me a highlight of him playing defense and knocking the heck out of people at free safety. I thought about it, but I was like, that's a competitor. And that's a guy that, that uh, you know, you're always wanting that, that physical guy, that competitive guy that can do everything to be playing quarterback for you. And he played both ways all season. Um, so the fact that he played every snap offense, every snap defense, but but I love his his ability to run the football is one thing. He throws the ball exceptionally well, and he's smart, and he knows how to lead. They won a state championship, and they had a tough road. And every game, and he played his last game on, on a turned ankle, and he found a way. Um, and that competitiveness is something that really attracted us to Avery, too. Guys that love to compete are going to be really good quarterbacks, and um, that's one of the things that Blake really loves to do. 
Sometimes a little help that he's coming in so soon, and he really can't do much, but he'll at least be soaking in information. That's the key, soaking in information, um, getting around uh, our, our quarterbacks, getting around our wide receivers, getting around – you know, the GAs and QCs when we're on the road um, to just learn what we're doing offensively um, and the fact that uh, when we do a seven-on-seven seven and the players organize and run a seven-on-seven seven in whatever, January or February, he's not standing there because there's five quarterbacks or six quarterbacks he's going to take reps. And uh, um, so he's going he's gonna to get thrown to the fire right away.